Well, fantastic. Thank you. Who's next? Cheers. Thanks very much. To this session now is just a quick briefing of what the breakout groups will be after lunch. Um, and this is also part of the strategic planning process. I think Clive has already alluded to some of the critical questioning we are going to have to think about around the strategic plan. You know, is the strategic plan still relevant? Do we need to tweak it? Do we need to refine it? Do we need to shift its focus? Those kinds of things. Um, in the next session, we also have the breakout for the chief executives to help shape the agenda for the uh, CEO's meeting tomorrow, um, taking the inputs of the, this meeting and these discussions. And I think there is another breakout group around partner recruitment. Uh, but let me just quickly give a brief summary. Um, our previous strategic plan was from 2015 to 2017. Um, and we delayed the development of this. Uh, this is kind of a bit interesting strategic. We delayed development of the strategic plan 2018 to 2021 for a couple of months, uh, waiting to hear around continuation funding, uh, because a strategic plan with donor funding is a different strategic plan to one without it. So um, we waited a bit, and the good news is our, we have received confirmation of continuation funding from the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation for the implementation of OERU. They are very happy with the work that we are doing. So we have a continuation general operating support grant for the next three years of 100,000 US per annum. So that is good. We, we've got a solid footing to really get the student numbers in as we move forward. Um, the strength of a general operating support grant is that we have decision-making autonomy in deciding how best to spend that funding in order to achieve the objectives of the OERU as we are moving forward. Roughly the split uh, from a funding perspective between external donor funding and partnership contributions is roughly about 60-40 at the moment. So we are just short of about 40% of our total operational costs uh, to have no, no, no reliance on third-party donor funding. So you know, if we increase our partners by another 20 in the next three years, this operation will be self-funding for what we are doing. So obviously the partner recruitment piece is an important piece of this puzzle uh, as, as we move forward. Of course, the other strategies we can be thinking about but I'm just uh, providing the context in which, in which we are operating. Um, so that's all good news from that perspective. Um, at the previous meeting in Toronto, there was a breakout group discussing the strategic plan. And the recommendation from that group was that the high level strategic objectives were still valid for the next planning cycle. So we took the high level objectives that we, uh, we had previously and the recommendation from the 2017 meeting and we put this rough planning document uh, together. The, three main go uh, the, four, uh, the five main goals are there in the strategic plan and we've populated with strategic objectives over the next uh, planning cycle. You'll see that the plan this time round is significantly more succinct uh, than our previous strategic plan. Uh, we found that the OERU is, a, is, is a, uh, a, a very agile development in the sense that our objectives and targets change quite dynamically, just given the nature of what we're doing. And we overplanned previously. So we spent a lot of time trying to calibrate a number of KPIs that nobody understood how they were relating to the plan. We've got a bit of a feedback loop. Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, relating to the plan, and, and, and so we've, we've, we've tightened it up. One of the features of the OERU strategic planning process is this evergreen uh, planning model, where we revisit the plan at each planning meeting to recalibrate, adapt, and modify. And the way that we do this, the way we're going to implement it now is actually by using the Kanban methodology. I don't know if, if any of you are familiar with Kanban methodology, but we can show you an example of how this works. Um, 
I should have preloaded this. Uh, let's have a look here. So what we've done is we've published a public can can board or can ban using an open source technology called can board. So how this basically works, you've got cards, which are your, or your main activities or initiatives within your strategic plan, which you shift around in the strategic plan, right? So all the things that we have done and are still doing for 2018, the cards are in the 2018 column. Um, here are the things that we, you know, are, are ready to go, but I have not yet started, right? Which is basically the final audits and setting up of the courses we have ready for launch. So basically how this works is if you want to, uh, if you know, this is the first thing we're going to do in 2019, we just shift this card into the 2019 column. So it becomes a very dynamic way of actually seeing how the strategic plan the, or the state of implementation of the strategic plan at any given time. So this is the public uh, accessible document that anybody can ha have a look at. The other piece in, in, in this is we've got a bit of a color coding thing going on here. If it's a blue, if, if, if the color is blue, it means we've started it, it's, it's in progress. If the color is green, it means it's completed. So just by way of example, um, so for 2018, the devil was in the detail, right? Was getting the uh, uh, transfer agreements all signed, right? For this, or not, uh, well, for the cert HE, that's done, that's signed, that's ticked off. Um, we are in the processes of finalizing the signing of the articulation agreements with TRU. That's nearing completion now. Um, learning in the digital age has been launched, it's completed. Introduction to project management has been launched, it's completed. You can, in fact, if you want to actually click on the card. Uh, or uh, the link here. Here we go. There's the link. If you actually click on the card link, you can actually go into the detail. So, if there has been any in communication in relation to this with the people that are involved with that, there's a public view of everything that's happening. So, this is a by way of example what we're hoping to, or how we're planning to communicate the implementation of the strategic plan so that anybody in the network can see where we are at, where things are being held up uh, as, as a basis for communicating the implementation of the plan. Um, you, you can see the things that we've done, you know, that we've busy with done, or that we've done. We've completed the learner support site. Uh, we're implementing the recommendation of the rationalization of the working group structures, and so forth, and so forth. Um, the work that is being going to be lined up here around the marketing project, you know, the 25,000 US, we've got to implement the marketing. These are the activities that are waiting, ready to go, that will be starting next week. So that will be shifting into 2018. So just by way of example of how we're going to, how we're going to do this. And when we have, have the talk, well, the chat about the strategic plan, we can actually start prioritizing. Uh, if there are, you know, any of these things that are ready, go and be implemented, we can prioritize the order in which they are executed. Um, one of the, un, I, don't, I don't know if it's law, un, it's a practice with CAN boards, is your priorities determined by the ranking of the card or the order of the card. So the things with a higher priority, you put at the top of the list when they sh shift it over. That's basically how Kanban method, methodology works. Does it make sense? Okay, that's around the strategic plan. We also circulated uh, an in between, so we've circulated the draft plan that we've got at the moment. Uh, an open invitation to comment, it was posted. Uh, did, I, did I include the link there? Uh, we can see when it was posted. Uh, this is a frustrating bar. Uh, we posted that out on, can you see the date there, Dave? Why can't I see the date? No, that was in the comment. Oh, after the consultation meeting on the 16th, we posted an open invitation for comment. Uh, at the moment, you can see we haven't received any substantive comments from anybody saying, you know, 
uh, we need to adapt or refine. So we just we need to then just focus to today if there are any major tweaks we need to make on that plan because the the idea is that. The breakout group will propose the recommendation to the CEO's meeting for the strategic plan, uh, you know, the acceptance and or any refinements that, are, that need to be made uh, for discussion by the CEOs tomorrow. That's around the strategic planning process. And you'll have the CEO's consultation, the chair of the Council of CEOs will chair the discussion to develop the agenda for tomorrow's meeting. So, Alan, you're going to have a bit of work again, uh, chairing the breakout group to help us shape the agenda for tomorrow. And our quality group with Adrian, you'll be continuing with your activities. Okay. Right, just to give me a rough idea around the distribution, uh, folk that are interested in considering the strategic plan show of hands oh Alan, you can't be in that group uh, Alan because you're chairing the other one but Phil you can be on yeah <laughs> okay so Phil in the strategic planning Val we got okay and so that's good we've got enough for the strategic planning group uh, oh the one that I haven't discussed is we have um, Collateral that we, we use to support partner recruitment, there's a, a formal letter of invitation. We actually think it's a bit outdated. Um, given the state of where the network is at, the progress that we've made, we think that that letter needs to be refined. And so we want to have a group to have a look at the letter of invitation that goes out for in institutions that are interested in joining the network. So there will be a group having a look at that and Lindsay will facilitate that group for. Leslie, sorry. Leslie will facilitate that group. And is there anyone interested in helping out with the partner recruitment? So Dave will be there. I might actually join that group. And Matt. Okay, so that's all good. So that's a viable group. Okay. So shall we have groups one and two after lunch? Groups one and two. So that's a strategic planning group. And the improving partner recruitment collateral group working here in this in this room. And then the executive leaders consultation in 2064, which is down the corridor here. And quality in 2065, Adrian. Okay. And that we can now break for lunch. and reconvene at 2 p.m. Um, we'll, we'll, yeah, Don is here, so that's all good. Right, apology for the short delay, but we're now ready to take the report back session. It has been a productive discussion. I'm going to hand over to Janet. Thank you, Wayne. <laughs> So I've been advised to keep timing up to five minutes for each group to do their presentations. So are we ready to go? Yes, yeah. Okay. So there's one more group that I yet to come, but we can start. Okay, that's group four. So shall I call upon group one? Uh, whoever is doing the presentation, Don. Thank you. So um, we don't have a lot of points, but that's because every word is very rich. <laughs> so we had a lot of discussion and, and basically um, a lot of our discussion revolved around 
looking at, at the mission um, statement throughout the day, there was a lot of discussion about what is the value proposition for members. And we also had a discussion about linking this with the other group. If we're going to grow our membership, we have to clearly articulate the why. But before we do do the why, the what. So we had a lot of discussion. What actually is the purpose of OERU? I think that there's a lot of assumptions within it, including the value statements, but they weren't explicit in the document itself. And we thought that this would help um, um, help us articulate it for, for those who've nev never heard of us. So when we look at the mission statement, we thought that we should add something about driving value for the member organizations, however that member organization articulates it. Right, so we cannot say this is your value or this is your problem with that, that, that we're gonna solve. There has to be a dialogue between OAU and the members. Um, yeah, how do you help? Well, the, 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 um, the other thing, how do we help institutions articulate the value? Again, going back to the point, every institution is unique, every institution is autonomous, their realities, their contexts are different, and working with them to tease out exactly what are they looking for. There was some, di discussion around confusion. What is the purpose? What problem is OERU trying to solve? Is this a, a distribution network, for, for example? Hence the business logics. Are we building capacity for OERU in general? Are we changing a culture? So a lot of these discussions were around, it, was, it simply what, what wasn't clear. And the strategic document above anything else should be ultra clear of what are we trying to achieve and how are we going to achieve it. Um, yeah, that, this is a long discussion. So we, we talked about one, one of the analogies, for example, was that when the bolt supplanted the different types of screws, so at one point, different companies would create their own version of a screw that you had to use, right? And with the advent of the bolt, then, we, then all of a sudden we saw um, um, the, the ability to grow scale because everyone is on a standardized model. So in saying this, we're not advocating that OERU is saying this is the one way you have to do it but it is standardizing and acceptance of an approach for OERs. So when we went down to talk about what does this mean for 2019 operational priorities, one of them was to expand goal four to achieve a fiscally sustainable and scalable OERU network by driving value for mem members, making sure we're here for the learners, but we're also here for the membership as well. Um, we also thought that it's about time to begin to build in-house capacity around marketing. Um, and that should be a concrete, a concrete goal in addition to further product development and again, driving that value proposition for members. But again, you're not going to be able to drive the value proposition unless there's a concerted effort to sit down with each partner to understand what is their context and what are they trying to achieve. Sustainability. The work that Wayne has done and friends around membership development and grants is fantastic. I would love to hire Wayne for our institution to help us out to get some money. But the fact is, um, for ongoing sustainability, we're probably gonna have to start a conversation around revenue stream generation. What does this look like? How do we maintain the values of open and make sure it carries on into the future? Uh, we offer this as a suggestion without any, any solutions, sorry. We don't know what that looks like. I think that sort of captures what we were talking about. Um, we, we distilled what we were talking about. Any questions? Yes. 
I've, um, I know that we, we keep talking about the value, um, the partner institutions need to see the value. I'm just wondering though, rather than viewing um, institutions as having a single uh, driver or angle or probably not expressing it very well, but whether we should actually be looking more at various key roles within institutions and each of those roles are going to have different drivers. So actually instead of thinking as a, as a single thing for an institution, that we actually look at it as being multi-layered within institutions. Because at UTAS, um, I actually find that there's various roles that I'm needing to have very different discussions with, that have very different agendas. So I'm needing within the one institution to, to pitch to very different groups that I don't have the expertise or the language to do that. So it's a very different discussion with marketing to a dean, uh, to a teaching team. And I'm finding that really difficult to navigate. Uh, whereas if I could hook a role into a network where there's a network of expertise to be able to satisfy or, or thrash out their issue, then that would be more useful to me rather than positioning UTAS as having a single, I don't know, driver or, or value or intention for buying in. No, I think that that's a great point. I mean, um, <laughs> universities are very complex organizations. And if people agree in the hallway, that is a rare day. And you're quite right. Membership is at an institutional level. The needs are, co are complex. And that's part of the reason why it, it, it is worthwhile, we felt, to take time to sit down with each institution as much as possible to understand their context because there's gonna be multiple needs. And probably one person within the institution is not gonna understand what all the needs are. No, exactly. So, and how do you get to that place of understanding the institution entirely? Right. Yeah. I, I have seen at some institutions, for example, you'll see a provost working group that is, is composed of different parts of the institution with di different needs, whether it's IT to faculty driven or what have you. But that's just one, one solution. I think your point is good. I would personally advise against a committee. <laughs> Right. To get a seat at the table to actually work through the problem. But I think in looking at the roles required for implementation, we'd be looking um, at more of a distributed leadership uh, model where we're looking at the key, the key roles of, of getting the job done. And that would go right from, from management um, right down to the people that are, are building the online units that are. Yeah. Yeah. I think we got a way in which we can potentially address that because it came out of one of the other groups is the proposal around the institutional action plans where we can actually get the responses of the or invite institutions to give the names of the various contact points in you know in the various parts of the organization and then link it up to this conversation of organizational needs. So, I mean, I think, I think we can accommodate it, yeah. We, we, we can, but when we're talking about the strategic planning exercise, you know, as part of the plan, what would be to get that nuance within an institution? 
without basically saying how we're going to do, do that at this point, right? But at least acknowledging the, 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 the complexity that every institution lives in is important. Any, any other comments, questions, critiques? No? Excellent, thank you. Thank you, group one. Okay, so group two, uh, improving partner recruitment college. Thank you, Janet. We can skip Wayne straight down to the four. Uh, keep going, keep going. There. Four, top four value propositions. Um, we came up with seven value propositions and then we shuffled them around to decide which were the top four. Um, uh, so the first one we came up with is social good altruism about um, democratizing higher education, as um, Dave put it, um, making sure learners worldwide can access and afford higher education and fulfill their potential. Cost savings to the institution was the second one we thought for potential members. Um, thirdly, the potential to offer assessment services as an alternative income stream and also lead generation for learners who, um, who uh, register for those services and access to demographic data about international learners because people have to, either they cope without it or they pay lots of money to get that kind of data. So um, we thought those were the top four, uh, but we also identified value for uh, members or for partners in joining a network of thought leaders who are embracing transformation in the higher education sector, um, building reputation with your branding on the courses that you contribute and as a partner, and the opportunity to influence future development of OERU and welcoming that contribution. Um, for improving the letter, it's, um, if those of you haven't looked at it yet, it's currently five pages, including an appendix. Um, we think it should be one page. It needs a very succinct cost-benefit analysis of membership. Um, OERU will help you too and list the benefits, um, and those benefits would each have a link to a relevant web page. Um, and we thought it would also be useful to have a link to the slideshow that Wayne showed us with the progress of the development of um, OERU because it shows the milestones, the timeline uh, for that, but it's a really good summary. Um, and uh, we suggest simplifying the offering. There's mention of gold and platinum membership, but actually really realistically, we thought people are just gonna be joining as gold members, whether they might subsequently move to platinum you can deal with later, but that doesn't need to be mentioned in the letter. Um, we also suggest that because you've got links to the content on the website, you can simplify the letter also and tailor it for different. So that picks up on Rachel's point that different institutions, but even different people at different roles within institutions have different priorities and will have different drivers and what they're interested in and the value of membership for them. Um, but you can actually, for example, if you've got um, seven uh, key identified benefits of membership, you can shuffle the order of them depending on who you're talking to. So you can tailor the letter quite simply. Um, and we need to tell them that we actually um, value their contribution. So it's not just what they can get out of it, but actually we want them to join because we want to grow this community and want their contribution. Um, and there should be an invitation to join partner meetings as an observer um, and stressing the transparency of process. So that's the letter, but we thought that the letter can't be changed in isolation. So if you keep going down, we had lots of other suggestions to improve partner recruitment. We need testimonials. We need videos, quotes, um, and so on from members, uh, members about the value of partnership for each of us. So for each of those benefits, there should be a testimonial about the value of that. And we should make it really easy to gather those testimonials, for people to submit them and also to ask for them. Um, the business case uh, that we saw is a business case for the operation of OERU. What we need is a business case for membership. So from a member's perspective, what is the, the, the value for them? Um, and if Wiki Educators is where we're getting lots of traffic, and lots of interest, um, then we need to improve promotion. So the Wiki Educators site for a moment, I just had a look at it, has a link to, the, um, to this meeting page, but it doesn't have a call to action for institutions to consider membership. So we need to be looking at that as our gateway to attract members. Um, and one of the key benefits of using OERU courses is having the credit transfer agreements. So that needs to be on that 
benefit page. Uh, clarity around US dollars, clarity around the structure of OERF and OERU. Um, there are currently two OERU.org web pages. One is potential partners and one is invites. Um, so we need to have we need to have a really clear pathway for potential partners on the website to access the information they want. Um, and uh, what have we got? Oh yes, address people's concerns. So we actually can anticipate what people's concerns are likely to be and, um, and answer those concerns on the website as well. Um, and oh yeah, trumpet key partnerships with the UN and Hewlett Foundation. Um, but again, that can go on the website rather than in the letter and uh, stress the benefits. So that's another cost benefit of analysis, not just of membership, but a cost benefit analysis of why come to these meetings? Because there are partners that don't come. So we actually need to sell the benefit on them coming as well, um, which, is, which I think would be valuable. And more photos on the website. So that was what we ran out of time for at that point, but we thought we've got lots of nice photos of people workshopping and, and photos that are coming through some of the online feed as well um, that we can use in promotion. So we didn't get on to who's going to do what in the next section. Um, so it's blank, but, um, but the letter probably needs to be reviewed in partnership with development of some of that web content. Oh, questions? Yes. So are you imagining with credit transfers that there might be some kind of a matrix that kind of shows for each um, course, these are the partner institutions that are providing credit, you know, what and how much credit for what subjects? No, we were, just, we were just looking at selling the benefits of partnership. So we were saying, for example, because non-partners can also use OERU courses and embed them in their programs, but the advantage for partners using OERU courses is that you've got a credit transfer agreement. So it's an advantage that is only available to partners as being able to, yeah, yeah, not a per subject benefit. Yeah, there would be, but not. Yes, yes, useful information, but it's, a, it's going deeper than we were. Um, I think, um, I just wondered whether there'll be an opportunity on the letter to actually be, um, illustrating the current partners by making sure the you know their their institutional logos are there. Be oh, sorry, um, because um, it's difficult to be a first flint, but um, often people will actually buy in uh, because other respected institutions and they want to be part of that. There's already a link to that web page on the letter. So the logos are all on the web page, and so that link would would continue to be in the letter. Other questions? No. All right. Um, oh, sorry. Who's the letter from? Sorry. I was just wondering who's the letter from? I presume it's from Wayne, but I wonder whether sometimes it could be from institutional. It's currently signed by Alan and Wayne and Robin and the chair of the board, which is, is it still Robin? Still, which is Robin Day. So it's got three signatures on it, and that takes half a page. <laughs> so <laughs> but you're right, if we're tailoring the letter, you could actually take it from somebody that they want to hear from. If you're tailoring a letter like that. Sorry, <laughs> just an idea. Right, I think that's my time up. Thank you, group two. So we have group three. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Um, well, a lot of what we've heard so far from uh, groups one and two are gonna is going to feed very nicely into our agenda for tomorrow. Our job was to discuss and try to come up with uh, something coherent with respect to our agenda. We're, we've got a few hours tomorrow uh, to try and give uh, direction to, to uh, Wayne and uh, set the agenda for the next a little while. We thought we'd, uh, we've heard a lot about the issue of sustainability of the network and in its various ways, not just money, but in other ways. 
Um, and uh, we have some business that we have to do, normally re review the terms of reference and the office bearers, and then to talk, uh, have a big brainstorm around the sustainability of the network with respect to revenue, uh, various types of corporate sponsorship, cost savings, uh, to be, be able to identify, and I think this is just going over the same ground that some others have said, to identify the point of difference. Why is OER do, different than some of the other networks that exist? And to be very clear about that as part of that when we're in, particularly when we're engaging with other partners and asking them to join or stay. Uh, likewise, with the value proposition and being clear on that and partner engagement. And we did have a proposal from yesterday that we'll bring forward, which is to set, set up a working group. And Phil was going to lead it to try to clarify and work on exactly what the partner engagement um, uh, proposition should be. Uh, we'll, go, we'll revisit our vision and strategic goals, and I appreciate the feedback from uh, Group 1 on that. We'll be uh, carrying that forward. Talk a little bit about curriculum. We had a, last year we set a direction with respect to finish, finishing off year one before we go to years two and three. I want to be able to revisit that and see, are we at that position yet? Should we uh, stay, uh, stay as is uh, until further notice? And also this notion that uh, many of the uh, courses are being taken for professional development. Maybe there's a different angle to um, uh, how we see our curriculum rather than just in traditional credit bearing years one and two, uh, but actually to uh, expand OERU for that professional development market. Uh, the elevator pitch, somebody talked about that I mean I think yeah it's a complex network with complex institutions somewhere along the line our responsibility is to bring clarity uh, to an, a, a sense of purpose to the discussion and try to think about what is the the fundamental elevator pitch that has a broad enough appeal that everybody can see themselves in it and uh, act accordingly uh, we did the soft launch last year. One of the outcomes of last year's meeting was to say, let's have a soft launch. Well, now what? We did the soft launch. We uh, exceeded our expectations. So now we need to sort of prioritize and schedule launch of the, the, the first year as a whole. Uh, so we'll be looking at all the issues table from discussion. We, have, we, we go through the rest register, and that'll be a pretty full agenda from about 9 o'clock until lunch arrives 1 o'clock. We hope to be able over that four hour patch to uh, have a successful meeting and come up with direction for the next year. Any questions on that? My colleagues, hearing none. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Alan. And group four, Adrian. Yeah, good. Can you talk from here? Can I talk from here? Uh, but we've really what we've got on the screen when you bring it up, there's um, the bit that I'll recap. Um, no, that's cool. Yeah, just going to end it. And that's it recap topic and where, where to from here. So really the, the discussion um, was a bit of a recap of yesterday as well. Um, and really what we came up with was a range of things around anything to do with a, a, a document which was about transparently discussing and articulating uh, how um, somebody who is designing one of these courses came to the decisions that they did when designing the course. So we need to balance between some tick box items. So for lack of better words, standards, tick box items could be things like, um, does, um, does your image have um, alternate text? Um, those sort of things, they're, they're a yes, no. And so there, there's an element of this that we felt would just be, you know, tick, 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 done. Um, however, there are also some contested ideas um, around the elements that, that would require a bit more discussion. And, uh, and through this, we, we believe that sometimes, uh, well, a lot of the time, values do emerge, things that, things that, we, uh, that we value in education and also the, the values of the person who was designing the course. 
um, consistent language across there so that we've got a shared understanding. And really what sits over all of this is that we wanted something that allows a person to capture, to document their decision making um, so that it can be communicated to somebody else. Um, and as part of that, uh, we very much wanted it to be a discussion about practice, not defend your decisions. Okay, so we never we don't want to put someone on the back foot and say, well, why did you decide to do that? Um, it's that should come out in the discussion. Um, additionally, um, we we certainly wanted to reflect um, uh, the advice from Rory in there that you know, do not dictate pedagogy. Um, this is actually around a shared understanding of practice, so that when a course, when you're when you're looking at a course and you read through some of the rationale. You can say, right, I now understand why you have chosen to set this activity or set this piece of assessment, or I understand how this links to the learning objectives. You may disagree with that person's um, pedagogical approach, but that's not part of what's in here. What, what you're doing is you're, you're looking at what is, what is their practice and how does it manifest. Um, and the other thing that we, we pointed out was that this will certainly help with credit transfer because credit transfer is about trust. And so having a transparent record of the learning design and these criteria can help engender a se sense of trust. Um, and also we thought that it would be a really good idea that we can communicate this as something where a staff member, if they are writing a course from scratch or they're, they're going to redevelop a course, um, it gives them the opportunity to do a bit of self-reflection um, and in doing that self-reflection and being able to articulate their design, their decisions, it actually could really work to empower people to make them more confident about discussing their practice and as such, perhaps more confident about sharing as well. Um, so from here, we're, we're hoping to continue the work. Uh, we'll put out a call for, um, to, to reinvigorate the working group um, because for a whole range of, of very different reasons, we've, we've had people move universities, move countries, all of those things. Um, the, the current working group has kind of dwindled a little bit. Um, and then a big focus on just repurposing something that already exists. There is no point in just starting with a blank slate. So I think there was a lot of really good um, um, shared discussion and I think a lot of shared purpose there. And I especially wanted to, to thank Stephen for his facilitation in that, in that um, group as well. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Okay, seems like there's no questions, so I hand it hand the mic back to Wayne. So, so we've run a little bit over time, um, which is okay. Um, what I'm going to suggest is that we take a 10, 10 minute break for tea, bring tea back to uh, your, um, your desk, and, and then we'll do the wrap up conversation over a cup of tea. Uh, if, the, if that makes sense, so that we finish on time. <laughs>